Welcome back to Sleepless Run and Plays. And today, we're doing another unboxing video. I just got in another Kickstarter. This one is for a game called Petricor by Fun Again Games. And I purchased the most recent Kickstarter they did, the Complete Collector's Edition. So let's unbox it today. Here we go. You're back. We've got our large packing box. Which is good because it means there's going to be plenty of game inside of here. And we're going to use our trusty X-Acto knife, as we always do. Get right in to this box. Okay. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Got a little paper from Funny Game Games. It says they, uh, they packed it. If you have any concerns regarding your package, please let us know. I will do so, if I have any concerns. Yeah. Which is a little bit concerning because there's just these three promos floating around in here. That's a... Uh... Hmm. I ought to put these inside of something. Like this bag right here. We got a bag of promos. That's why that's from the Kickstarter campaign itself. We've got all the variety of expansions, the Honey Bee expansion, the Flowers expansion, the Cows expansion, then we get the big box. We got the collector's box itself, which has got all the game trays stuff in here. And then we have the main game, which I do believe you transfer over to the collector's box. So that's everything out of the big brown box. Let's get into what's in these smaller boxes. I'm going to start with the the various expansions. Let's take a look at these little expansions first. So. Once again, trusty X-Acto blade. Cows. Flowers. Nope, that was punny bees. And flowers. Okay. You got the flowers up. So the flowers, we got a mini rule book. Some white tokens, clear tokens, some things. I do believe that this is for the fifth player. I think the fifth player is white. So, cards. And three more cardboard pallets or plates. So. That's in the flowers. Next up, we got the honeybees. Got a rule book. Big bee token and lots of uh, honeycomb hexagons. Small deck of cards. Stickers for the bee token. And four cardboard plates with pop-outs. Last up is the brand new Cows expansion, which I do believe is the reason why the Kickstarter was actually done, was for the Cows expansion. But Because uh, all the other expansions had come beforehand, but because I did the Collector's Edition, I was kind of going in for everything. Cows expansion. Got the rule book. Another deck of cards. It's bigger than the honeybee, but smaller than the flowers. Some cow tokens with a little wooden disc in there, or cow meeples. Stickers for said cow meeples. Black gemstones. 
probably have a purpose or probably like manure or something like that. A miniature board that folds in half for the cow's expansion. And once again, four cardboard pop-out plates. Then, side of that, we've got three small mini expansions right here. We've got the Petricor Promo Punchboard 2, uh, Petricor Promo Anthill Punchboard, and Petricor Promo Punchboard 1. Yeah, I don't have them holding in my right order, if I could be. One, two, ants. So, got those ones. Those are just loose and floating in my box, the brown box. That's not the best. That should be in a little plastic baggie. Just like all of these promos, which I do believe these are the ones that were unlocked via the Kickstarter, which is a lot of promos. Let's see what we got. Got a deck of cards in the promos. A, splat, split, a slate of stickers to go on these three quarter circles. Then we got a thing that says where well, the rules can be found. If you don't have the collector's edition rule book, which apparently you need the collector's edition rule book to use these, which makes sense because these are part of the collector's edition promo stuff. So we've got eight of these punch boards. One, which is a volcano. Two, some more flowers. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, these are shipped properly. These are in a plastic baggie, along with everything else, which I wish they'd included those other ones in a plastic baggie as well. That's just, you know, my personal opinion for, you know, safety reasons. Just so the tokens didn't start wandering around in case they came out of there. covered all the expansions let's dig into the main game box now which is actually a really beautiful cover this thing is a nice uh, mellow white with a beautiful raindrop on the front of it it's very uh, meditative in many ways so I like that a lot that looks really cool once again trusty exacto blade you just get it right into there just a tip only to slice along between the box and the lid. So we can pull that plastic up. Don't want to damage our game board boxes ever. Although this box I think will be going away in the closet or whatever, because I do believe I'll be using the collector's edition box. That's what you're supposed to be doing. So open this box up. We've got the original Petricor rule book. We got four sheets of tokens, one of which is already attempting to come undone, which means they're well cut, which means it'll be easy to get out without any damage, hopefully. You've got our game board, double sided. Okay, based for longer games or shorter games. I'm not seeing a player count indicator on here, but that may that'll be explained to me in the rule book. We got a big old bag of tokens or gemstones. We got a cloud token and some beautiful colored wooden pieces. We've got four dice, one of which I do believe is just a normal D6, the other ones of which are different. Then we've got a stack of cards. Not a huge stack of cards, but probably plenty to play the game. I would assume. And that's everything that came in the main game box. So there's not a lot in there. Now let's dig into the collector's edition box. This box is much larger. 
It's got artwork now on the front that displays all of the variety of expansions. So you get the cows expansion, the flowers, the honeybees, and so forth in the front of it. Still with the raindrop around surrounding it. And uh, it's a pretty big box. It's, it's twice as tall as the original game box. Inside, we do have a much thicker rule book. It now contains all the expansions in it, and as well as the new expansions. Then we've got our game trays, which all appear to be empty. We've got five player trays, little raindrops, with uh, spaces for your markers and a variety of other things. So, being game trays, they're good. They're good quality. It's got. token trays so you can store your tokens in them. Two of those. Then one of the really cool things is all the player markers kind of latch in on top of the tray that covers the clouds. So each cloud is a little cup thing. And in here, they've got pegs and bases, as well as plastic 3D lightning bolts, which are just kind of cool. So, you pretty simply build a cloud by not throwing it on the floor. Build the cloud by placing the peg up into the cloud. It's a little bit tight. Then you attach the base to it. There you have a cloud. Thankfully, they fit into the box fully built. And they actually fit in there really well. So that's good to see. So I am going to go away and I'm going to now undo everything in the box and I'm going to organize it into this case and then I'll display that. So I'll be back in just one moment. A few moments later. And we're back. I have now completely boxed all of Petricor in the collector's edition box. Let's open this up and see how I boxed it. <laughs> Lid off. Got the rule book on top with the game board above it. Then I've got everything organized this way. I've got my two token trays completely loaded out. This one contains all expansion stuff from honeybees and cows and other ones. I really wasn't too concerned about you know whether or not I maintained all the expansions in one because I obviously didn't. I wanted to use the main, I wanted to use the, both the trays to the full efficiency. So this one contains quite a bit of stuff in it. Uh, each, tra each of the uh, uh, trays I made sure I filled fully. So that's one of the trays. The trays the same way. There's just one gap in it that has a little bit less stuff. And that's the one with the little player marker. I just didn't uh, feel like putting anything else in there. So I probably could have taken like these like four unique tiles that are in this one and stuck them over there as well, but I thought, why? I just leave them over there with these and it's just kind of nicely organized as it is. Everything in these trays should be relatively easy to pull out. I mean, I guess I could have stuck them with that one. That there's, there are several, should I do that? There are several unique tiles that there's only one of like a cactus, a volcano, a uh, crop rotation, good berry, and uh, a blue one. Yeah, I haven't played the game before, so I don't know what half the stuff is. I just paid attention to it as I was reading 
through the description of the components. So that's why I remembered some of those names. Then beyond that, we have each player token thing is set up. We got green, yellow slash amber, red, and blue. And I'll tell you, some of the red tokens could be a bit more bright red. I had a little bit of trouble distinguishing them when I was putting things away from the ambers. I am a touch colorblind, not completely. It's like a little bit of shade blindness. So that was a little bit of an issue for me. But thankfully I never have to use the red color if I don't want to because fifth player has white or clear, which is really nice and easy to distinguish. So then we have all the clouds built and put into their tray, which is, like I said, the clouds are a little bit tight. So be careful when you build them to not, uh, not break the cloud. Then we have inside the box. I put the cows board like on one side or the uh, climate board that comes with cows on one side of the, uh, the thing in here. It just kind of keeps it smooth and straight. I put all the main game tiles in the center. Then I have the five whatever they are that are white in there. I split the two main game cards into the two front and back sides. Then for each ex each expansion, I kind of left it right now as just as by itself in there. Once I think I've played the game a few times, I am probably going to be mixing the cards together completely and just always playing like the full game of everything. I mean, that's the point of expansions, right? To play everything at once. So I've done that. I've got my cows in here with the cards and the wonderful little cow tokens, which I've placed the stickers on. Things I wasn't expecting to do today, put stickers on meeples. Actually, I guess I should have been because I knew this was coming in. So I guess, yay. Stickers on meeples was a thing I was gonna do today. All the cows cards go in there. Now this thing's actually a pretty cool tray because you can push up to get the cards out. And then when you have your tiles in, you can push them the opposite way to grab them out. So like everything comes out of here really nice and easy, which is pretty cool. I put the thunderbolts just into into one of these sides because like, I didn't want to fit them over in the other trays. So I thought that's good enough for now. I have tested a few card sleeves on these cards. I just sleeved up like the action cards right now. And they do fit in here, at least in that main tray. I mean, sleeved cards will fit pretty tightly it looks like in any of these trays, so they're gonna be a bit tighter. But these are old green sleeves from FFG, and I have a feeling that if I buy the new game Genic ones, they're gonna have a little bit of less excess space the top wasted. I'll have to try and find out, because I love to sleeve this thing up completely and get it in here. Because I any game where I'm gonna shuffle cards at all, I want my cards sleeved. I think there'll be enough space for sleeved cards, because under several of the expansion areas, I have nothing in there at all. So there should be plenty of area to split out the cards once I have sleeved them all up. It shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. I will, I'll leave a comment below in the uh, description of the video about whether or not, how, how much success with sleeving the cards goes on this thing. That'll be of course, you know, wait for wait for a little while for me to get that because I don't want to be able to get into the store to get sleeves. We're supposed to have inclement weather here. <laughs> um, so I will not be able to probably go over to a game store and grab sleeves anytime soon. But that's pretty much how you box up the collector's edition. It's actually pretty simple. It's everything kind of falls into place. Just keep your cards organized until you decide how you want to mix them up. And there's space for all the tiles in all these things. I mean, I don't think they can make another expansion though, because this seems like a complete game at this point in time. Everything fits in here. It's like they're done with this game. This is like the idea of here it is. This is finished. So I think it looks pretty cool. I can't wait to play it. I mean, I'm glad there's a solo mode. So hopefully uh, at some point in time, not in the too far future, I'll have a solo playthrough of this, of, uh, this up. So look forward to that. I haven't done one of those in a while. I've got so many games I need to do a solo playthrough on, but things have just been pretty busy and it's been hard for me to actually sit down and do that. And part of it's my own fault. I've been running a Battletech campaign and that does eat up a lot of time as I think up missions and have to paint mechs and so forth and so on. <laughs> I mean, oh no, painting mechs, how terrible that is. But um, yeah, I like I like the way this looks. It's a very clean box design. The game trays are amazing. 
And um, I think it's my first game I've actually gotten that actually has game trays. And I think a whole bunch of my upcoming Kickstarters may actually involve it, which is actually kind of cool because I do appreciate the quality behind them. They really do kind of give the whole thing a more final, more uh, snappy kind of appearance. Everything's nice and organized. And then you can just, you know, when you're playing the game, you can just hand this out. There you go. There you go. There's your player set. That's all you really need is that, that, that little token box for your players, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, I like it. I think the thing looks gorgeous. And uh, like I said, I can't wait to actually sit down and play it. I mean, with D&D &D and Battletech, I haven't actually had time to play a board game in a while, which is, again, kind of depressing. So I need to sit down and do that. I think we come to the end of this video. We've unboxed it and reboxed Petricor from Fun Again Games. I am. I think it looks gorgeous. That, that's that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna say right there. I think it looks gorgeous. How it's gonna play? I hope it's fun. I really do. I do tend to do some of these Kickstarters without actually like going. Have I played the game before? Um, the game looked like it was pretty good though. It looked pretty fun. I like kind of games that are kind of like mellow, and this kind of seems mellow. So that's what I'm looking forward to. It's kind of like a mellow competitive game or whatever. So. I think it looks fun. But we come to the end of the video, so you know it's time for you to do the uh, YouTube thing. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Be great. Really help me out. This is Sleepless Running saying sayonara, and we'll catch you next time.